Students, the topic for today is the next interaction which is called as competition. Let's read from the NCRT first, then we will go through the uh, notes also. Side by side, I will be explaining the concepts to you. So when Darwin spoke of struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in nature, he was convinced that the interspecific competition is a potent force in organic evolution. So when Darwin was, uh, Darwin was talking about the theory of natural selection and survival of the fittest, uh, he, uh, he was already clear because of his observations made on various islands in Galapagos chain that he found that there are species which are competing and this competition is responsible for the various organisms developing that means diversity which we see today is because of the struggle for existence and survival. It is generally believed that competition occur when the closely related species compete for same resource that are limited. Now, we always believe, even in the context of human population, same rule is there, that competition will always occur in closely related species. And then they will come and why do they compete because they are competing for their same resources which they share. So once the resources starts becoming limited, the competition value is going to or stiff competition is going to start. But it has been found that this is, this is not always entirely true, NCRT says, but this is not entirely true. First, it is even possible that unrelated species can also compete for same resource. So we might think that tiger and the uh, tiger and the cheetah, they are supposed to be or otherwise tiger and the leopard are supposed to be competing for same resources because their feeding habits and their food is almost similar. But this, this rule also goes even in the case of unrelated species. Like for example, a bird feeding on insect and a fish also feeding on the same insect. So in such cases, unrelated species may also compete for the same resource reason they are in the same habitat or the same environment. So let's go through the NCRT. Totally unrelated species, that means it could be a bird and a mammal, a bird and an amphibian. So the unrelated species can also compete for same resource, for example, in a shallow, now this is again board point of view important, in some shallow South American lakes. So in those shallow lakes of South America, it was discovered that there were fish already in that lake and obviously fishes are supposed to be related to each other and they should compete for the food and their food was zooplankton. Now it was discovered later by scientists that whenever the season for migratory birds come there, so the flamingos migrate to those lakes in South America and when they reach there, the competition is going to become even more intense because now it's not just the species of fishes which are competing for the food. Now even birds have come there, flamingos have come there and these flamingos are also going to compete, add on to the competition because they also feed upon the zooplankton. Let's go through the NCRT. So uh, it, visiting flamingos and resident fishes compete for their common food and the common food is zooplankton in the lake. So that means uh, it is not always true that the related species compete, sometime unrelated species also compete. Now the second point from NCRT, the resources need not be limited for competition to occur. Now we might think that competition start when there is resources are less, but this is not always true because let's read an example. In the interference competition, now there is something called as interference competition. Now let's go through the NCRT first, then I will explain. So in interference competition, feeding efficiency of one species might be reduced due to the interfering and inhibitory presence of another species, even if the resources are abundant. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Imagine for a second, for a long time, for hours, a tigress is there uh, sitting under the bush, uh, in ambush because it is trying to hunt upon the deer. Now you must have seen on the television screens also that a uh, tiger is trying its level best to hunt but suddenly some movement of the tiger is noticed by a monkey somewhere sitting on the top of a tree and monkey starts shouting and the result is but the deer will become active, they will become alert and they might run away from there. Thus the presence, just simple presence of the monkey <coughs> is causing interference. Now in this case we can consider that there are numerous in number, there is abundant deer present, 
so uh, it is not the tigers which are fighting for the deer but it is because of the presence of monkey in the area the presence of somebody's interference is going to have negative effect on the feeding ability of an organism so here the tiger misses the food hunt or misses the prey because of the uh, presence of the monkey creating problem uh, with the food chain so once this happen the feeding efficiency goes down and once the feeding efficiency goes down it will have even effect on the reproductive ability so that means what the r value we have already covered that before r value uh, is going to in decrease in this case let's read from the ncrt once again resources need not always be limited for competition to occur in interference competition this may come in exam the feeding efficiency of one species might be reduced due to the interfering and inhibitory presence of other species even if the resources are abundant therefore now there is a new definition of competition which is not the usual definition so please be careful to read this competition is best defined as the process in which the fitness of one species fitness means the r value is significantly lower in the presence of another species so that means it is not the related species competing sometime the presence of a species can cause negative effect so uh, a process in which the fitness or the r value of a species is going to come down we call that uh, process as